Hey everyone, this is Gabby. Thanks for tuning in. So today I wanted to talk with you all about how God wants you. Now many times we can easily forget that God wants us because he loves us, right? Like when we hear all the time that God wants you to spend time with him or God wants you to get in the word or to pray, to fellowship with him. It can be easy for us to think like, oh yeah, I have to do this. And it more being like a religious ritual. But behind it all, the reason why God wants us to seek him is because he loves us, right? And we can easily forget that truth that God is a jealous God and he longs to spend time with us. And many times we can just see God as God, but forget that he's father, right? In scripture, God is referred to us as our heavenly father. And so that's really what I want to talk about today. And just it was just so eye-opening to me just this past week of how much the Lord wants me, of how much the Lord loves me. And I wanted to share with you all just, you know, a little bit of what's been going on with my own life. And, you know, this past, I would say this past two weeks, I haven't been intentional with putting God first. And, you know, I used to do that all the time where I would wake up and I like the first thing I would do is I would just acknowledge the Lord and, and pray um, and then get ready and, you know, start spending time with Jesus, my alone time with him. However, these past two weeks, I have not been putting God first. Like when I wake up, the first thought I have is my husband. You know, I text him, start thinking about the day. I go on social media. Um, and then sometimes I'll listen to my coaching call or I'll do my morning workout and then I'll seek the Lord afterward. It's still good to put God first, like to make him our first thought, right? And just in my own life, as I was getting into alone time, I just felt the Holy Spirit convicting me, but convicting me in a way that was showing me, hey, the Father wants you, right? It wasn't just like, hey, you haven't been putting God first, right? You've been like thinking about social media and all the things that you have to do. But it's more so this loving invitation from the Father to seek Him, to give Him my best, right? To give Him my first. And as I was pondering just the reality of how much God loves me, I was thinking about it. And so many times, like we know that God asks us to give our tithes, right? The first 10%. Um, he always wants us to give us our best. He wants our first love, our first devotion. You know, the Lord asks us for our first because he loves us, right? Scripture says that God is a jealous God and he doesn't want our hearts to be given toward any idols or anything that's above the Lord. And so, you know, like the Lord was just highlighting this reality to me that he was inviting me to just love him. And I want to read this psalm to you because this really just hit my heart. And I've read Psalm 139 many times, but the Lord just gave me such deeper revelation of this. In Psalm 139, 17 and 18, it says, How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And even when I wake up, you are still with me. And I love this. And when I read this, I just felt his overwhelming love towards my heart. The fact that God of the universe, like this God that we have, that he loves us so much that he has given so much thought to us, right? Like it says here that the thoughts that he has for us outnumber the grains of sand. Like that's how much the Lord thinks about us. That's how much he loves us. And so he wants to spend time with us. He wants us to know him, right? And I just always think about like, for example, if you're in a relationship or if you're married and you have a spouse, like you would want your spouse to think about you, right? Because you love them. And so you want them to think about you. You want to talk with them. And so same thing with God, like he wants to talk with us, right? Like I can't imagine like how much it breaks his heart for us to go about our day. And finally it's like 9 PM and we're like, okay, God, now I want to talk with you. When like the whole day he's been wanting to talk with us. He's been wanting us to acknowledge him. He's been wanting our hearts to, to just be in fellowship and in union with him, right? Like even in your car drives or in your lunch breaks or taking those moments just to acknowledge God, like God wants that because he wants you. And what's beautiful about it is as much as we have that family or that friend or that loved one, as much as we can say that they're thinking about us, no one can think about us as much as God does. Like right in that Psalm, Psalm 139, that verse it says, that his, precious, his thoughts to us are so precious and they cannot be numbered because they outgreen the numbers of sand. Like as much as my husband loves me, there's no way that he can love me like God or that he could think of me as much as how much God thinks of me, right? Like the, the thoughts that God has for us are so much and we can forget that God actually loves us. We can just get in our minds of like, oh yeah, I have to do this. I have to spend time with God. Well, God is a loving father who wants to spend time with you. 
right? Like imagine a father, for example, like your dad calling you wanting to spend time with you, right? Like many, maybe many of you right now, you are longing and you wished that you had a parent that is wanting to spend time with you. Well, know that you have a heavenly father who loves you, who wants to be with you. And in fact, he made you. In Psalm 139 verses 13 to 16, it says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in the book before one of them came to be. So here we, are sh we, we can see that God made us, right? He was the one who created us. And so how much do you think that the Lord would want you to know him? And I believe that it breaks his heart that many of us right now, um, either we have not put our time in seeking the Lord or being with him, or many of us don't even know God, don't have a relationship with him, right? Like the Lord is your creator, he's your maker, and he's your father. And he wants a relationship with you. He loves you. He longs for you. And if you've been in a place where you grew up, maybe in a, just a very religious environment, where it's all about rules and condemnation, all those things, like understand that God is a loving father. And yes, that there are rules that we have to abide in the scripture, right? Walking in the way. But those rules that God even gives us is for our best. Right? When God says for us to live a pure life, it's for the best of us. Trust me, like I've lived an impure life and there has been consequences that I've had to bear even into my marriage because of that. So the things that God asks us to do is for our good. But like the Lord's not wanting us to be like, oh, I have to read my Bible. I have to pray. It's about having a relationship with God. He wants to show you real. He wants to speak to you. He wants to show his presence to you, this mighty God. He wants to move upon your life. And what I love about Psalm 139 is that we can really see just the love of God upon us. I even love the first three verses in Psalm 139. It says, you have searched me, God, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. The fact that God would even want to search us to know us. Right? Like God here, he cares about you. Think about your father or your, or your mother, right? Like calling you and just wanting to know how you're doing, the condition of your heart so that they could comfort you and help you. Like that's God right there. Like he wants to comfort you, right? Because He's he has searched our hearts. He doesn't even have to ask us. He knows us. He knows our thoughts. And when you keep on reading, it says he knows when we sit when we, or when we arise. Like he knows all of our thoughts. And God does that because he wants to comfort us, right? And he even would care about what we're thinking. And so this reality has really just been hitting upon me. Like even what I was sharing in the beginning of this recording of how I was just felt, I felt so convicted that I haven't been seeking God. Like he wasn't my first thought. I didn't give him my best when he loves me so much and he just wants to spend time with me and you know for me to give him my best and as the lord was showing me of how much he loves me my heart you know it's just been just beating for the lord it's been tender before the lord and i pray that those are who are listening right now that your hearts would be marked for jesus right that your hearts would be so marked for him that you would have this love this first love and i think of always the book of um, song of songs or song of solomon where him and his wife are just giving the, these like love love letters right right writing these love letters to each other and how they were so in love right like may our hearts beat for him that we would long for god I love what it says here in song of solomon this is the woman here speaking of solomon she says when i found him whom my soul loves i held on to him and would not let him go i love that like may our hearts just long for the lord to hold on to him and not to want to let him go right jesus jesus even prays for us in john he says i pray to the father that they may be one as we are one like god wants us to be walking with him throughout the day in unison with him flowing with the fruits of the spirit flowing with fruits of joy peace love patience and i feel like in this season the enemy has been trying to rob us of our joy and rob us of our peace by the things that's going on in the world, by our worries, by our fears. But God is saying, hey, I'm with you. But he promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us and that he goes with us forever. The Holy Spirit, in fact, lives inside of us, right? So he's always there. He's always speaking. He's always there to comfort us. And so we have to be willing to just give ourselves to the Lord. 
to be in tune with him, to give our attention to him, even in the middle of working, even in the middle of going about our day. And that's what it means to abide in him. And it takes practice. Like there's been times where like something annoying would happen, but in those moments I have to remember, hey, like everything's okay. Just acknowledge the presence of God, right? In Exodus, God tells Moses, I will go with you. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. So we know that the presence of God is with us, or shall I say that we acknowledge his presence when we feel rest inside of us. And so let us practice just giving of ourselves to God because God wants us. You know, like God wants you. If you're in a place right now where you haven't been stewarding your relationship with God, know that God loves you. He wants to show you the best that is to come, right? John 10, 10, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come to give you life to the fullest. Hold on to that truth. That there's something in your thought that says like, oh, like, I don't need to have a relationship with God. I can put him off. Like, know that that is a lie. There hasn't been a greater joy of me just knowing who Jesus is and doing life with him, right? And I'm at a point now where I want to give him my best because I know of how much he loves me. When you hear the call of the Father calling you, that you can't help but answer him. Why? Because you are created to have fellowship with God, you know, and because he's our creator. And we miss out on the true joy of life where we actually don't live out who we're created to be, right? And like this whole life journey is about knowing Jesus. Paul even says in Philippians, I throw everything, I put, I call everything else as garbage because I have known who Christ is. Paul says in Philippians 3.8, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. So what Paul is saying here is that there's nothing better, nothing in this world that can surpass the beauty of knowing Jesus. And when I say knowing Jesus, I don't mean like knowing him from like what you hear from people or even like just like things of what people have said or spoken. When I say knowing Jesus, knowing him by experience, knowing Jesus by doing life with him, by being immersed in his word and seeing his word come to life in your own life, like this revelation that you can experience. And so if you don't have that, I would encourage you to give your time to Jesus, right? It's a matter of just giving your attention to him, surrendering it all to him. So I wanna pray for you all today. God, I thank you, Lord, for those who are listening in, God. God, I pray, Lord, God, that you would just show them your love. Show them, God, the call that you're wanting them. God, that they would have ears to hear you, God, and a heart to be open to receive you, Lord. I pray right now, God, those who may be struggling with shame or condemnation, God, Lord, that you would reveal to them the truth that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. God, that you have covered it all and that we, ha we don't have to think that, oh, we've, we've done so many bad things that we can't be close to you or that we can't know you or that we can't live for you. God, you are a God who redeems. You sent your son Jesus to die for us so that we could be restored, that we could be redeemed and have a relationship with you. So I pray, God, for those who are doubting, Lord, that they would understand that they can give their life to you now and they could have fellowship with you and that you are calling them, God, and that you still have great plans for them. I pray, God, I just want to pray this verse over you, Ephesians 3, 17 and 19. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide, how long, how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. I pray, Lord, that those who are listening, that they would be rooted in your love, that they would see how great and deep your love is for them, that we can't even comprehend it. It doesn't even make sense that you would love us, like who are we, or the things that we've done bad, or the times that we didn't even want you, God, that you still are calling us, Lord. But it's when we understand, God, the depths of your love, that we can live out the fullness of who you've called us to be, that we can live out in joy and purpose and purity, God. So I pray for those who are listening, God, that you just remind them of how much you love them, that they'll start getting revelations in these next couple of days of your love for them. So I thank you, God, in your name, I pray, amen. So I pray that this video, or if you listen to the podcast, that this has helped you. And remember that God loves you so much. And you don't have to worry about what you've done or the mistakes that you've made. But there is an invitation that God is asking you right now to come to know him because he wants you. 
And so I pray that you've been blessed by this. And like I said, if you haven't blessed, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. If you're listening to the podcast as well, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review so that more people can be exposed to this. And lastly, don't forget to share this with someone, right? Because you never know who needs to hear this and who can be blessed. So I hope that you were all encouraged by this and I'll talk to you all next time. God bless.